When I first started visiting chefs where they cook, learning about their culture through the food they love to make, I hoped that I would see new things, find new techniques, ideas, and of course, new insight into how other people see the world. This show has been all of those things to me, and in every way, it's been more. Most of what I hear is beautiful. Stories about overcoming hardship and adversity, the kind of stories that make you feel good. But it would be delusional for me to think that I wouldn't have to hear the hard stuff too, ugly stuff sometimes. But never along this journey did I expect to hear something that would affect me so personally okay, or hit so okay. close to home. As a chef, I need to stay curious in order to evolve. For me, that means looking beyond a good meal to learn more about who made it and what inspires them to cook. La comida es amor. Every great city has great food. I'm going on a journey around the world, right here in St. Louis. I'm on a quest to find passionate chefs who cooks from the heart. It's exciting. And I think it's the best. To prove that food is love. And it's gonna be delicious. Food is love. Love your food. St. Louis has long been known as the gateway to the West. But to some, it's also sort of the beginning to the South. You don't have to look very hard to see Southern influence in the food scene. And in no place is it more vibrant than in St. Louis soul food. In fact, you may be surprised to know that St. Louis is considered the unofficial home of one particular soul food item, the fried snoot sandwich. For the long time, the snoot has been on my radar. And today, finding a good snoot sandwich is my goal. That's why I'm here at Gourmet Soul. Located on Del Mar near the City Museum, Gourmet Soul has a reputation for nailing the quintessential soul food classics. Collard greens, sweet potatoes, fried chicken, Chef Lavinia McCoy, or LV as they call her around here, isn't exactly known for the snoot sandwich, but she has agreed to make one for me and give me a look of what they do here at Gourmet Soul. I've been, uh, I've been chasing this snoot sandwich for a long time, oh, really? so I'm so happy I finally found it. Do you want sauce? I do want sauce. Okay, well let's eat some but sauce. But isn't this? Isn't that how you eat a snoot sandwich? Yeah, well, not everybody. You know, it's a preference. You know, some people like sauce, some people don't. Okay. So, you know, but I like sauce myself. People use, uh, like, potato salad yeah. with it. Put it on there. Yeah, that's how. Potato salad to get kind of room temperature, not cold. The ideas of this have kept me awake countless nights. Oh, that's a snoot sandwich and right there. that's a snoot sandwich right there. All right. I'll be snooting here in a second. There you go. The moment has finally come. That is so good. I love snooch. Delicious. Think of it as a cross between crispy bacon and pork rinds, sandwiched in between two pieces of white bread and covered in barbecue sauce. Crispy, savory, salty. Seriously, more people should seek this out. It is so good. I've been wanting this snoot for a long time and I got a snoot full. It's awesome. With the popularity of baking at its all-time high, I think a lot of people would naturally love the snoot sandwich. But that's clearly not all that goes on here. These right here, I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna cut them up, and I'm gonna do a little uh, saute. Okay. A little onion, red pepper. So are these greens bitter? Yes. By nature? Yes, they are. And so that's why we're gonna have to do stuff to them too. We're gonna uh, razzle dazzle them. Razzle dazzle. Yeah, we're gonna razzle dazzle these greens. So I mean, Garlic. so the idea behind the restaurant is that you are elevating. I'm soul elevating food. soul food. Like even you know in the dining room, you know typically when you think of soul food and you think of a soul food restaurant, you think of it being in a bad part of the city, um, pretty run down building, uh, hosh posh furniture. Yeah. No flair at all. So I'm trying to break, break that barrier. Mm -hmm. Is you know there is always like you say this stigma about okay, if you go to an African American restaurant, it's in a bad neighborhood. So how do you get white people to come over here to Ooh, your restaurant? Question of the day. Yes. Question so of the day. So tell me how you're going to change that. How are we how um, are we going to help changing people's mind that this is a great place to come. Your place is beautiful. 
and we are we're we're introducing people that may not be familiar with anything other than greens and you know what they heard or seen but this you're taking that extra step yes and and elevating the yes. food i've been trying desperately for six years okay to cross over yeah yes and but I mean, I, I don't easy. feel nervous about being here. I don't feel nervous when I came here. The city museum is right around the corner. So yeah. we get a lot of uh, traffic. Not, we don't because, again, yeah. they come in and they see all of us. Yeah. And they walk back out. Yeah. 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 Real tall. This is cornbread dressing. Cornbread dressing. So yeah. what we do, first of all, is we bake the cornbread quite naturally. So what's the difference between stuffing and dressing? I can't tell you the first thing about no stuffing, honey. Okay. I think it comes out of a box. All right. Okay. This right here is the good stuff. It's dressing. So what we do is we simmer the celery and the onion, butter, and then we add a little chicken base to it and get us a nice reduction going. And then to this, we add a couple of eggs. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna add some green, some, some sage and some poultry season and some black pepper. Okay. And then I'm gonna let you taste it before we throw it in the oven, right? Yeah. I want you to tell me the difference between this and okay. stuffing. But I mean, this is stuff you grew up with. This. Yes. This. We don't eat stuffing. We eat dressing. We eat. <laughs> well, 